Well, we got a couple of days of rain. In total, we got about an inch and three quarters. Today, it's uh, cloudy, overcast. And according to the weather, we got a 100% chance of rain tomorrow. So lots of uh, rain. The next uh, nine days of forecast looks like chance of rain every single day. So uh, I guess we're getting into the rainy season. And that, of course, makes it hard to get dirt work done. But, uh, you know, we're going to do what we can. If uh, we can't work, then we'll figure something else out nothing else I'll read a book anyway so I'm taking a walk down right now to check out the uh, new road I guess I, I call it the road addition I don't know improvement project the road improvement project that might be good we'll see uh, what the rain did with it. So let me turn you around here and let's get a look. So here I'm just walking down the, the main road here and I'm gonna transition onto the uh, new stuff. Remember we did uh, two lifts and uh, it feels pretty solid. Now you can see here where water washed down off of the uh, old portion and uh, you know you can see clearly where it brought that red clay down. Now this here seems to have a higher sand content. There is a lot of clay in it also but the color difference it's more of a brown than than red. You can see here where again water came down I think it came all the way down from the top spread out through here you know washed down through here all the way down over off that edge so I mean until we get this uh, done and shaped properly we're just gonna keep dealing with this erosion I mean the water's got to go somewhere and uh, you know I don't always have the ability to to redirect it maybe temporarily if I can do something up top get it to redirect over there but I don't know that's uh, based on the slopes and everything that'd be pretty hard to do so I don't know I think what I'm gonna do right now there's still some moisture in this ground and uh, you know when you got moisture in the dirt it does compact better I mean typically that's why you see like the the road workers or whatever you know driving the water truck over and spraying everything getting moisture content into the dirt because that helps it to compact better so of course natural compaction would just be rain by itself so a lot of the uh, pad that we built up at the top we built it so slow that it was i mean we compacted it as well but it was getting compacted as also by rain and so when it came time to uh, build on it the uh, concrete contractor was pretty impressed with the level of compaction he didn't need to do anything to it he said a lot of times they come in on these pads and you know the top is solid but you get down a few feet and it's soft and as far as they dug it was solid I don't know if you're seeing what I'm seeing but a little deer across the road right here went back in the woods probably <clears throat> So there is some moisture in the ground, that's for sure, but it's not, uh, it's not like muddy. So I'm hoping that we can do a little uh, interesting. So something crossed the road here, almost like a little herd of them. <laughs> I mean, there's so many tracks. And uh, 
you can see where their toenails dug into the dirt. There's little holes. I can see a few tracks that show fingers. So I'm not sure if this was a what this was. It's really hard to tell. Maybe you can see those tracks real good there. Almost looks like three toes. Interesting. Some sort of little varmint. <clears throat> Maybe multiples. Could have been a possum. Hard to say. Couldn't really see good tracks, but anyway let me get up and get this compactor going and let's uh let's see what it does and how the dirt reacts and uh, that'll give us a indication of whether we're going to move dirt or not today to at least get us headed towards the decision like we were able to get some more compaction out of that so that's a good thing the more you can compact this dirt in the better I mean the goal here is to make a solid road so we definitely don't want it uh, smushy so this feels pretty solid walking on it so should be able to get the dump truck all the way back in here. That's a good thing. So now we got to walk up to the borrow pit and see uh, how that looks. Hopefully it's not all full of water and muddy. We don't want that. Looking at our borrow pit, everything is damp but not muddy. Now one thing I do see about this pit, so in the past, everything we've been digging up was a lot of clay. And here I see that we've got a lot of that sugar sand, which that's not the best material. So, I mean, it crumbles into sand. It's not, uh, it's not enough clay in that. 
So hopefully uh, the majority of what we're getting is more like this. See, this will... Oh. See, you can compact this into a dirt clod. There's enough clay in that to stick it together. Now, it's got a lot of sand in it. So that's how the soil is around here. A lot of sandy loam. And it's a generally... When you get down, it's either a whole lot of clay or a mix of sand and clay. This section here that we're digging in appears to have a higher clay or sand content than most than what we've been dealing with in the past. So we've gotten down to what I'll call a sand layer, which is interesting because uh, typically we haven't seen this. I mean, some of this soil almost seems permeable, which means that uh, you could put a leach field in there and, uh, and it would leach. So that's interesting because we don't typically find that around here. Now I haven't thought about uh, doing that type of septic system, but if that's an option up here at the top of the hill, then we might want to consider that. We'll see. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Like I say, we could be five years away from uh, building the house up here. So uh, not a decision we need to make right now, but definitely a mental note about this soil. and Maybe uh, do a test hole or something and put some water in it and see what happens. But you can see that inch and a half of rain uh, up there on the top where I dug shallow and it's still a lot of clay that you can see held water this down here with all this sugar sand mix uh, it didn't hold any water I mean it has soaked in and when I picked up those dirt clumps I mean they're they're moist but they're not they're not damp they're not muddy uh, there's a little bit of uh, water content in them so Bottom line is, I think it's dry enough that we can actually move some dirt. So let me see if I get the ex excavator going. Check all the fluids and all that kind of stuff first and uh, see if we get some work done.
I might not have got that load as far up as I would have liked to, but the terrain's just too uneven to back clear up in here. You get that uh, truck tilted too far one way or the other, and you lift that dump bed, and it could tip the whole thing over. So you definitely don't want to do that, but it's okay. We can move that dirt up with the dozer. We're still pretty good overall. Let's go get some more. Well, everything was going good until it wasn't. We got about uh, six loads done and we got a uh, light that came on in the truck that said oil slash water. So uh, I have no idea what that means. I did a quick uh, Google search on it and it looks like it could be a whole slew of things. Uh, I did notice that the uh, temperature sensor we were running just a little over 210 and I think we usually run down around 190 so I think it's running a little bit hot uh, so that definitely could be an issue then so I've got to do some troubleshooting here's what it looks like under the hood of this big diesel I need to check my uh, fluids my radiator fluid I usually check everything else, the oil and everything was good, so I gotta check uh, coolant in that bottle that sits up over there. You can't really see from the outside how much it's got in it, uh, but it says don't open it when it's hot, so I gotta let it cool down a bit, because I definitely don't want to have that uh, exploding all over me and get all burnt and that ruin my day. So we let it cool down a little bit, check the fluids one more time, check... Uh, I mean the radiator, one thing it said it could be the fan clutch ain't working right, but when I looked at it, I mean the fan was turning, so uh, I don't think it's that. The radiator and everything looks pretty good from the front, doesn't seem too dirty or anything like it's, you know, blocking airflow, so uh, seems odd that we'd be low on radiator fluid uh you know antifreeze and water whatever but uh that's possible i guess have to check it out and see if that's what it is if it is i don't know makes no sense why we'd be low because i've never seen it leaking or anything i don't see any evidence of it leaking now typically if it's gonna leak it's gonna leak right around the uh, water pump and i'm looking at the water pump right here and it's all looks dry i don't see any evidence of uh of leaking so if you're not leaking in the water pump and you don't see any leaks in any of your hoses or anything like that then uh you know where's the water going oh wait a minute i do possibly see some little bit of water down there but uh that could just as easily i mean could could be rainwater i mean it's been raining so that's hard to say we'll look into it do some troubleshooting and get it figured out hopefully this don't uh, stop us dead in our tracks and we can move some more dirt because we've only got six loads done and that's nowhere near what we want to get done today so just under halfway. Let's see what happens. All right, we're definitely leaking some antifreeze. I don't know if you can see it, but oh, right down here, if you can see my fingers, there's antifreeze down there. And uh, it's coming from somewhere up above, which suggests water pump. So, damn, it's always something. If we got a water pump going out, then that's a more significant repair to tear this whole thing apart and put a new water pump on it. But like always, we'll do what we gotta do.